Hello and welcome back to Adam. So, it's time to explore Krasno properly. Oh, well, we have a sidearm. So, that might help. Hopefully this guard is not gonna attack us. Oh, you just let in. What's up, mister? Locked. Can we talk to him? Okay. <clears throat> they expect me to work in such an environment. Everything is falling apart. There's no real supply of coal. Hmm. Life is hard, but on the bright side, it's short too. <laughs> Great. Problems with the shipments of coal, buddy boy? What's wrong? I can't resist that conversation option. See, since the old mine br down east depleted, we have to get the coal from the north, through Paragon. And I'm guessing you already know what kind of place Paragon is. Because of it, we don't get the shipments on time, Krasno blacks out constantly, and everyone blames me for that, since I'm the head of uh, this uh, here plant. I see. Um, too bad. My cuts are nothing. You have electricity, at least sometimes. That's order than miracle. Uh, want some help, actually, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe you could uh, do something about our troubles. Someone needs to speak with the guy responsible for the coal shipments, who sits somewhere in the Chamber of Commerce bunker. I would do it myself, but I can't leave my post even for a minute. What should I tell him? Well, just tell him to do something about the shipments to the power plant. We can't cope with the way uh, they are now. Too slow and random. Uh, what, what will I get for this help? <clears throat> I'll pay you. Something like 700 rupees. I see. Um, where should I look for him? He already told me that. In the Chamber of Commerce bunker. Nobody can get inside the thing, though. But you look like the type of girl who won't be stopped by that. The man you need to chat up is Alexandra Sablin. I can't tell by your expression. Did you just call me a sleuth? Did you do that? You bastard. How could you... Well, you're... Well, okay. I I'll forgive you this time. God damn it. Okay, I I'll t tell him what you told me, okay? That's what I wanna hear. Tell Sublin he needs to do something about Paragon. You're my only hope now. I shall not I'll disappoint you. Don't worry too much. I, I better go. Some of my questions now? Do we wanna... Did we already get the quest from him? Maybe if I understand this game a little bit better that's what I'm hoping for. If I understand this game a little better, uh, maybe I won't get too uh, annoyed by some of these um, life stories that they just like, completely uh, drop on me. Like, come on, man. I just said hi or something like, Oh my god, I trust you! Please, you're my love story! I was like, uh, that's awkward. <laughs> Tell me yourself, electrician. I don't really care that much. Uh, came in from the north with the first wave of immigrants. Hate this climate, but I'm alive, so I guess it's not all that bad. <laughs> I see you're a real sucker for asking people questions. You have no fucking idea. Heard any rumors? People say there are problems with the coal shipments from Paragon. Holy fuck. Because of some feud they have back there, no matter what anyone does, they still continue the infighting. Now, if they accept the rule of the Chamber of Commerce, nah, that would have been even worse. Too much plutocracy that way. Uh, thanks for the chat, um, old man. Oh my god. Before you stands a tall man in age, grayish, short sleeved shirt, he is constantly looking around and biting his nails. On his skinny face is fixed a look of contempt. 
amazing. Can I ask something else? What? That's just... That's literally my first line. <sighs> Whoa! Okay! Ask why of you, Neto. That's, that's his voice. Ah, uh, that, that's right. How's life out here? What kind of question... I can't, I can't do it, can't keep it up. What kind of question is that? We live, that's that. If you call it living. I spit in the face of anyone who uh, says that it's a good life. And who's to blame? I tell you that. The nosy ones. Is that so? The man looks at you silently, biting the nail of his left thumb and scratching himself with his right arm. Are you, what? I heard any good rumors? I always hear the rumors around here. Everyone is yapping all the time. There is no meaning in what they say, though. But I heard an interesting rumor recently from people who I can trust. They say that a terrible monster came into the wastes. A man-eater. Tall as three-story house. Fang, scary-looking savage. And he eats people for fun. Yup, just for laughs. It's his hobby, you see. Eating people. That's very scary. Very terrible. Indeed. Yum. <laughs> I had to change his line. It was yup, but I had to say yum. It, it, it had to be done. <laughs> What's you in town? <laughs> oh, come on. It's okay. See how big our city is? And it was ever so small at the start. So small. It was actually better when it was small, yeah. It'd be better if it stayed small. Although, it's not really big even now. Fuck, can I kill you? Big is a huge word, you know? No, uh, it's not big at all. No, oh, no big, no big at all. You let people yap and they'll call everything anything. Like, for example, they'll call a small city big. Yup. Yup, I'm going. How about getting shot in the face? It's a... Uh, Something I can't do. <laughs> Why can't I do it? <laughs> I'm gonna get killed. A tired man, his face covered in coal dust, blinks fearfully and wipes his dirty hands on his trousers. He snorts and gives you a questioning look. You see a badge pinned to his uniform. Simeon Lepushkin. <clears throat> look, I'm working now. If you have questions, go talk to my boss. I like this! Finally! Someone who told me to fuck off! Please, game, keep doing this. If you have a character that has nothing to say, then make that character say me nothing. Tell me nothing. Or tell me to fuck off. Like, it's fine to have characters that just, uh, uh, tell you their one line and you can't initiate a conversation with them. Like, Fallout had a lot of them. I'm thinking that this city must have multiple sectors, multiple parts. Oh, nice one, man. You want a shirt? <laughs> a shy, how do you know? Small young man walks around the street. When he sees you, he turns to you and extends his arm. You grab it without thinking too much and almost cry out. The palm of the man's hand is cold, sweaty and clammy. Also, yeah, STOP HURTING ME! And no one's gonna come to my help because this is Russia. <laughs> oh, I found myself! Adam Blinovich. Head of the Victim Society for the Victims of Doc Veselov. An inf infamous uh, medium and pseudoscientist. You are a victim as well? Now you're not. You don't even look like a victim. So why you're here? What? What was that grabbing about? And now we're just like starting a lame conversation? Who is this Doc Veselov and who are his victims? Ah, <sighs> The man suddenly covers his face with his hands and sneezes. When he puts his hands back into his pockets, you notice that they are now covered in green boogers and smelly slime. With a voice that would make anyone fall asleep. He drones on. Oh, I, I have to make him sound boring.
boring. Okay. <clears throat> Who is Doc Vasilov? Nah, that's not boring enough. I have to go full monotone. Yeah. Who is Doc Vasilov? I don't... I, I'm not sure if I can pull that off. Everyone knows Doc Vasilov where I'm from. He's a rad bastard. He created this pseudo scientific theory. We are its victims. There's so many. I got one new member each month. Okay. It's time me more. Some was made strong, yet stupid. Some were made smart, yet sickly. His theory that he created way back before the war was this. Every person is formed from several so-called characteristics he called stats, like strength, dexterity, luck, or endurance. Each stat is equal to a certain number, from 1 to almost absent 11. Very strong. He then developed a set of exercises, meditations, and spiritual practices that could make your stats grow or change. A lot of people started practicing his teachings. Everyone wants to be strong and fast nowadays, right? But what he didn't warn us about is that you grow one stat, you lower the others. This is why I can now do this. The man takes several small objects like soap, dried bread, some keys and bottle caps out of his pockets and starts juggling them with amazing dexterity. Even though what he does is beyond most humans, you feel bored as you watch him. See how agile I am? But that agility cost me my charisma. Now my wife has left me, saying she is afraid to die of boredom. My friends tell me I make them feel depressed and ignore me. Also I look creepy and sound like a robot. Oh god. Hey, I know. I, I go to that dock and make him fix you? Go get that dock and make him fix you? Yeah, that's right. What? Why would you think we need any help? Doc Veselov is actually a long dead. Some of the folks he made strong by turning them mentally retarded tore him to pieces way back uh, when. The bastard got what he deserves. I had to put boiling water inside my anus for a month because of him. Some folks have it even worse. For example, one guy became so lucky, he now finds canned goods everywhere he goes. Yet his endurance is slow and his stomach is so weak, he just vomits everything back. And when he doesn't, he gets blood in his farts. So no, no help is needed. I'm simply keeping a list of victims. I'll take what they can spare and share it with those who have it worse. Look buddy, <clears throat> what you told me isn't, po isn't even possible. Plus you're saying you don't have any charisma, yet you are a leader of a whole victim society. Quit making yourself think you're worthless. F what? I have 100 personality! And the man pouts. I'm not a Christian to poke fun of victims, friend. Ah, let's change the subject. So, what do you do for a living? Like I told you, I br Oh, for fuck's sake. Right! Very from. Alright, if you don't want to talk to me, I'm going. Literally make a character just just to be boring and be a meta character. Ah. <sighs> hmm. Is there anything here? Whoa! I actually left the area. What the hell? Well, let me back in. Oh, can I zoom out? Oh, I can. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. That makes sense. <clears throat> What's up, hombre? As soon as you approach the militiaman, you notice some details that are pretty hard to see from far away. There's something queer in the man's body proportions. His hands look like... look a little longer than normal. His gait is too much spring in it. Even his pants are strange since it, there's an extra fold of cloth sewn into them. When the man notices you, he asks you with a deep yet kind voice. 
How do I do a deep and kind voice? It gotta, gotta be uh, <coughs> deeper than me, mine. What is the matter, little one? Got a kitten lost in a tree? Or maybe your kite is stuck in a telephone wires? Just uh, daddy, lo daddy long legs. will come around ASAP. Daddy long legs? Is that even your real name? Nah, it's a nickname the little ones gave me. Just like Uncle Giraffe and Kumra Telegraph Pole. The old people who took me in as an orphan named me Stefan Stefanovich Stefanov. But I don't like that name too long. Um, I'm not much shorter than you are. How come you call me little? Um, sorry, you know, I, I love the city so much. I think people as if they were my kids. That's why I call y'all little ones. Because I care for you and I love you. Oh, come on, dear. We both know that that's not the whole truth. Trust me. Fine, fine. You don't look like a person who would uh, let her later make fun of me. You know how antennas and cars are made? You can make it several meters long by pulling on it. Or you can collapse it into a tiny old thing. That's how Mother Nature decided to make my legs work. With the help of radiation. Observe. Okay, the weird militiaman walks away from you, clears his throat and starts growing. His legs start to extend and do not tear his pants only because of the extra fold of cloth soon into them. The man quickly reaches the height of three whole meters before the process stops. He then collapses his legs and shrinks to his usual size again. He comes back to you looking a little bit embarrassed for the show he put on. The people are <clears throat> here, they respect me for my height. When I go to work, everyone sees me a kilometer away. Getting boots is a problem though, with such huge legs. I also need to eat more than normal men. And when I sleep, my legs extend, so there's no bed that could fit me. Still, so, I'm happy the way I am. Hot damn, that's an interesting transformation you got there. Ask away, little one. I'm glad to have a little chat. Um. I think we explored the first two at least. You heard anything up around the city? I heard that our enemies in Paragon lack morals and common sense so much they made the place for dogs to fight one another to the death. Why, those bastards. I throw them to the ring for the poor old doggies to chew on and tear them apart. I should probably go. Hey, you have some ammo? He does have some ammo. And he's sending it for... Oh, I, I don't have... Okay, that that's an okay price to sell it for, but I don't have any uh, guns to use that. So, for now, I'm not gonna buy it. El Polo Loco? What? Oh, yeah. Let's take trash. That's extra money. We could literally take out the trash out of his bins and sell it to him. You wouldn't be able to do that anywhere else. I'm not thieving. I'm. I was. I was gonna help you peel some potatoes, but I guess that's out of the question now. You see a middle-aged man who has his gray hair combed to the left side. His eyes. He eyes you with suspicion. His knuckles are tight. His legs are bent in the knees. As if he's preparing to fight you. What the hell are you leaving, get go? If you came here to talk, do it quickly. Hey, you're kinda like crazy. Unlike most of your people, you don't sting, so I'll give you a couple of minutes to say what you want. Though, so, go on. My kind? What do you mean? Pfft. Your kind, you know. Adventure seekers. Bums. Hobos, losers, other types of living garbage. 
Wanna tell me you're not like that? Let me guess, you came out of nowhere and you're looking for a job. Wow, how did I guess that? Actually, I'm here on important business. Oh, let me guess, you're a member of an atom, the atom, and you're looking for a lost member of your organization, all the while solving difficult problems that plague the waste. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, sure, girl. Should I bow you bow to, bow to you now, oh noble one? Hold on, where did you get the Shinto? Let's, let's just tell that. The man looks at you astonished, as if uh, not getting what you're even talking about. Huh? I just made that up to make fun of you. What? What do you mean to say I guess the truth? No way! You need to die! No, in the least. Haha, <laughs> well, let's change the subject. Maybe instead of the subject, we'll change to this. Maybe we'll change your location. To some dump somewhere, for example. God, your kind just damn straight pisses me off. Fine, what do you want? You know, if you don't wanna talk, we're not gonna talk. You see a well-built, grey-haired man bending over maps, compasses and rulers spread all over the desk. He seems to be sunk in thoughts. He knocks his knuckles against the surface of the table. I'll just keep watching. Look at the table in front of the man. You cast a furtive glance at the table in front of the man. There's a map of the wasteland, all covered in lines, notes and scribbles. You instantly see familiar names. Otranoia, Krasno. This is clearly the map of the region. Oh my god. It looks like a military map. Atom used similar ones for battle planning, but you don't have time to think this through. Though, as the man raises his eyes at you swiftly, for a moment he looks irritated, but quickly composes himself and gives you a friendly smile, albeit a bit forced. It's, it's not nice to spy. Now, the thing is, obviously, is that this is a 3D game, but it is it is all show it is all just typed out. So this is one thing that can be shown easily. Like you can see, like in Skyrim, some some guy is just leaning over a uh, like a map of the region. Done. Doesn't need to be typed out. But obviously, this needs to be typed out here. Uh, I can't blame the game too much. Uh, they're trying, but yeah, th there's there's obviously a better way to do this. <clears throat> he straightens his uh, broad shoulders with visible pleasure, groans quietly as his numb neck uh, makes a cracking, crackling sound. Phew! What can I do for you? <laughs> Fuck. Uh, funny, isn't it? I was going to ask you the same thing. I see. Interesting. How can you be used to me? You tell me, and I'll do my best. That's... what? The man gives you a long look and finally shakes his head, uncertain. That's... That, that's indeed quite unexpected, but perhaps there is a job you can help me with. Do you want me to put you in the picture? Yeah. Damn right. Do I need to be naked? So an influential man has hired me to deal with the problem of that Otrodoya is now facing. At the moment, I'm looking for people who could do this job, but it turns out that those I'd like to see involved are not too eager to respond to my call. Response to my call? Respond to my call. <clears throat> Who's your employer, if you don't mind me asking? Why would I mind? On the contrary, he, has, he asked me to spread the word about it. It was Dan from the factory. Dennis, Dennis Savage, who hired me. Perhaps you've heard of him. He's sort of in charge over the village, so I assume he doesn't want any harm to go its way. But he's not sure his gang can cope. So, what is this threat Otr Otradnoye is facing? 
At the moment, it's a big gang of slave owners who have decided to take over the village and turn it into a its, its central base in the wasteland. If they succeed, it won't be just be the villagers who have it tough. It will be all of us. Oh my god. You can't take this English. Who's your employer, if you don't mind me asking? What? No, no, no. I can just keep asking the same bloody questions. I see, go on. So I need someone to gather all the men I need to gather, or perhaps even participate in the forthcoming operation himself. It'll be one hell of a clash, trust me on this. Why man? I'm a capable woman. Not really, but... I'm more capable now that I bought a pistol. What will I get for this job? Sounds like a hard job, come in. As you wish. Oh well. Uh, perhaps I'll find someone. What? Wait, didn't I say count me in? I'd like to talk about the job? Whoa. Didn't I say count me in? Uh, well, I meant to say that. I'm ready to bring about their reconciliation. Great! I know that uh, uh, Lyudmila must be now at the filling station fortress, which belongs to Krasno Militia. Yeah, I, th I think we know where that is. Rumor has it that Pronin has started working for Paragon and serves at the border guard fortress. I'm not sure about Smirnov, but the last time anyone saw him was not far from Otradnoye. I'll mark these places on your map if you haven't been there before. Uh, okay, well, we'll check it out when I get there. What about you, mister? What? He has a grenade uh, tied to his head. Oh, boy. You see a well-built man sipping cold beer uh, from a high foggy glass. His slightly crazy smile and weird goggles imply he'll have a lot to tell. And by judging and judging by the ammunition belts that cross his chest alongside various harnesses and holsters, the conversation will be utterly polite, or might become the last conversation of your life. It's beer. Hi youngster! Have you come to hear my stories or just chat? <laughs> the man gives you a sudden closed look and clicks his finger against his grenade amulet. I strongly advise you against making me angry. This grenade is real, you know. I might use it, if need be. And goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Why are you covered in old sweat all of a sudden? I'm just joking. Um, I have some questions? Ask. I love sharing my experience. I consider it an investment in the future. The more beginners I teach now, the fewer idiots I have to rescue from mutant beasts in the ruins later. What's your name? They call me Patrick. Patrick the Psycho. And if you hear someone calling me the White Wolf or the Mutant Hammer, just ignore it. These are nicknames from my past. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, got you. A pleasure meeting you, Patrick. Sure. So how do you earn a living? By all this. The man opens his arms as if trying to embrace the wasteland. It might sound bad, but I feel like I was meant for this world. For the apocalypse. Before the war, I couldn't settle on one job. And after I did well as a stalker, worked as a mercenary, and even restored civilization in a certain area. There's a village called Patrick's Land. Pay a, w pay a visit if you ever in the east. Patrick's Land. Uh, I see. So, are you interested in ruins? Ruins, drains, bunkers, all of the places what, where treasures of the old world are hidden have special place in my heart. Until I raid them. Then they somehow fade into my memory. 
Um, there are interesting rumors. The locals have told me that a former apprentice of mine, Rivlin from Silesia, has gained the glory of the best mutant hunter in the neighborhood. What can I say? I'm proud of him. I just wish he wouldn't have too many of his mutagenes. This is his nickname for vodka. Yeah, he always had uh, this bad habit. He didn't even need a good company to go on a binge. Wow, that's really good. Okay, let's let's change the subject. Tell me about your stories. Maybe that's a unique conversation option. <laughs> it's nice being at a place where no one knows about my adventures. I'm a well-known traveler and adventurer back where I'm from, so everyone there has learned my stories by heart. And here I can always find a willing ear. Ah, uh, all in all, I saw many wonders and was able to live with my life every time. I survived the atomic battery and the bark Zukan's gang and the Warkuta Animali. Animali. Well, that's not right either. Tell me about the atomic battery. <laughs> Once when I was a stalker, a rich scientist hired me to collect a full list of different artifacts for him in the wasteland. At first I thought he was planning to assemble a computer with an unusual or dynamic case. The penny dropped by the end when I was plotting to meet him with a spent uranium in lead case. This nutcase was going to build a miniature nuclear bomb. I never turned up at the meeting. The Earth has suffered enough from these bombs. I can respect that. What about the Barzuka gang? Far across sea in the southern lands, there was a man called Barzukan warrior and a religious leader, he gathered thousands of people around himself and uh, converted them to his fate. He was planning to attack this part of uh, the wasteland uh, with his horde, but there was one weak spot in his religious book left, I presume to make his teaching uh, more plausible. If a man who can kill an elk, a lion, an exotic panda in a fist fight, Barzukan himself would have to bow to him, it said. Well, I put two horseshoes in my old uh, boxing gloves and accepted the challenge. After Bazookan's uh, public execution, <laughs> when the horde made me their leader, I offered them to live in peace. I hope they obeyed. Uh, what about the anomaly? When I was young, I traveled to Vorkuta. Brrr. I still feel the cold when I think about it. To keep the long story short, I saw one of the super deep holes drilled in the Soviet times uh, from some research. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Vertical shaft running about 50 kilometers to the Earth core. We had a fight with the guys who ran the local ironworks. Eventually they caught me and uh, they threw me down the shaft to avenge half of their gang that had perished from my hand. I remember the edge of uh, that giant hole, blackness below me. I remember falling down, screaming at the top of my lungs, and then BOOM! I came in, uh, the taiga, alone missing, my left boot a hundred kilometers away from that spot. Was it teleportation? My guardian angel or an exotic mushroom dish I ate? Still puzzles me. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Wow. A lot of talking. Didn't I see this guy already? A short lad about 18 years old with closely cropped hair is running to and from in front of you. He's busy serving drinks to visitors and cleaning various rubbish as he goes. As he notices your stare, he nods towards the bar counter. You better talk to the Chief Fidel if you want to order something. You gotta address him. I'm always serving drinks and cleaning here. Well, uh, in that case, I'll let you get back to work. Thank you. Thank you. If you have nothing to say, don't don't go about just saying it for like 10 minutes. Who's this guy? Do I know him? Oh fuck, we know this guy. 
Ah, uh, fuck off, Fidel. This is my bar now. I wonder if this is where Fidel lives or this is just a hookup spot in the bar. Would you really hook up in this bar? <laughs> I don't know. A strong man wearing a headpiece is standing in front of you. He's pensively stroking his small, uh, neat beard. Well, I'm kind of glad uh, that uh, that turned out to be his beard. It could have been something else. And watching the visitors of his bar with attention, as he sees you, the man slightly nods. <clears throat> Saludo! Welcome to my bar! My name is Fidel! How can I help you, amiga? Is Fidel your real name? The man smiles and shakes his head. <laughs> of course it isn't. My real name is... Fuck me. Agdavletov Iskander Aytugan. Ah, uh, Ablad Zindinovich Jr. Just call me Jr. or Fidel. But you can call me just Fidel if you don't mind. No, I, I'm good with Fidel. What the fuck is that name? Why Fidel exactly? I've just dreamt of visiting Cuba since I was little. The, the Freedom Island, perhaps you've heard of it. Well, due to the obvious... You probably shouldn't have an accent, right? You probably shouldn't probably sound Russian, right? Well, due to the obvious reasons, this dream uh, died 20 years ago. But this nickname stuck with me somehow. Okay, let's change the subject. Pour me a drink! With pleasure, amiga. What would you like? We got our special cocktails here, and we also have the classics, beer and moonshine. We also sell cocktails for currency. I'm warning you in advance. Um, show me the menu. So, that doesn't help. I might want Prevar Vodka, because that lowers my radiation. Buy Vodka. Do I need more Vodka? I think we might want like two more Vodka here. As a way to reduce the radiation. You can have that. Let's trade. Good trade! I, okay, sure. Let's let's talk. Can you ask him some questions? You know, size and having given the hall another look, he turns to you. What is it you're interested in, Amiga? Tell me about yourself. Oh my God! Time for chat. Fido smiles and quickly answers so quickly as if. He's learned the answer by heart. I myself from the north, Amiga. I came from Krasno around five years ago and quite quickly made my bar here. I already made the money put away. I already had the money put away and uh, good people helped me build it. Now I live and work here. Sure. How's the business going? I have nothing to... I have nothing to complain. Krasno is a big city. There are plenty of people living here and press, uh, travelers pass uh, through it every day. My establishment is uh, not the most pompous, of course, but it has something special about it. Its Cuban flavor attracts people immediately. Yeah, but what is Cuban flavor here? Your name and Fidel Castro pictures on the wall? I'm glad to hear it. Uh, what can you tell me about the city? Ah, Krasno, a city of sharp knives and even sharper tongues. I advise you to be on the guard here, Amiga. Beware of local intrigues even more than the knives. Um, do you know any rumors? Travelers from the faraway lands uh, say that by winter we should expect a deficit in fabrics. But, you know, Amiga, we'll probably be more interested to hear that's there okay but you amiga will probably be more interested to hear that there's a monster in the waste so called skin worm I, I don't I don't know whether it's true or not but I'm hoping never to find out I guess that's that say the password what 
What's the password? One, two, three, four. You clear your throat. I lean closer to Fidel and whisper. One, two, three, four. With a nonchalant look, he picks up a glass from the bar counter and, examining it for stains, answers. But it's better to die a traitor than to live a slave. Shh. Okay. Having said that, he gestures to a short lad who's running to and from the bar hall. Kostya, stay in charge here. My friend came to see me. We need to talk. And you follow me. Oh, fuck me. Now they think I'm his hooker. <laughs> sure. Should we pull away the curtains? Fidel cautiously peeps behind the red draping and uh, distrustfully looks around the bar, finally having made sure that uh, none of the visitors is behaving too suspiciously, he turns to you with his hand outstretched for a handshake. Handshake? What? I know what we are doing here, you ain't gonna fool them. The coast is clear amiga, nobody's eavesdropping on us. Yeah, f yeah right. What do you think the guys are doing in the bar? He gives you a firm handshake. Okay. I've already told you, you can tell you can call me Fidel. <clears throat> Who do I have the honor to be talking to? Good day, Fidel, my name is Babe. Fidel is listening to you. Attentively, his watchful stare slides down your figure. Apparently, the agent is in places uh, studying your ways. Maria Sklodowska? Gutstadai Effendi? Karina? No, I'm, I'm babe. That's it. The man looks you in the eyes and slowly nods. Yes, you're telling me the truth. Well, babe, I understand you came to ask about the lost expedition of General Morozov. I'm afraid I have to disappoint you, as I myself know nothing about it, although you perhaps have already managed to find something else. I can tell you everything I don't know. Peter is listening to you attentively. He doesn't interrupt you, nor inserts his comments. When you finish, he... Uh, pensively, uh, takes off his headpiece and runs uh, the palm of his hand down his bald scalp. I think it would be better just to leave that out. Yeah, it's it's clear that's nothing. Nothing's clear. Yeah, it's rather tricky. So it is. All, all right. Uh, we need to examine this issue uh, thoroughly and figure out what's going on while also getting in our characters and running errands for the locals. The main thing is to avoid raising suspicions. Wait, did you say we? Fidel makes a theatrical gesture with his hand. I'm going to come with you, amiga. Together we have a much bigger chance of finding things. Besides, I'm sick of this work. I'm a man of action and adventure seeker. Here I'm tied down to some spying activity, to some bar. Alright, Fidel, let's hit the roads! No way, I don't care. Let's hit the road. Perfecto! Let me just get my belongings. Get as much stuff as you can, Fidel. So this is just gonna uh, follow me around now? A bag. Does he have a weapon? Let's discuss tactics. How are you feeling? Healthy as a horse. Lovely, I'm off. The young lad looks around the bar, frowning. He casts a quick glance at you and nods. Yes? Nah, bye. <laughs> Get out! You gotta come with me! Stop walking around! We need to run! El Polo Loco! Okay. Is this the whole thing? No, that's not the whole thing. 
even on max zoom, we can we can move it around. Oh, I don't want to run around like that. Who the hell is this? Before you stand the stock, you cleanly shave a man in dirty shirt and work pants. In his hands, uh, he plays with a cigarette nervously. Amazing. Can I can I ask something else? Uh, they obviously fucked it up. <laughs> <sighs> that should be like, hello, can I ask you a question? The man looks you over with disgust and sniffs. He looks you over suspiciously as sniffs. Walk away. <clears throat> ask away if you wanna. Heard any rumors? I heard that there's some female adventurer lurking around in the waste, interrogating strangers and asking them incoherent questions. Like, what's up? Tell me about yourself. What's new here? And always asking about the latest gossip. Personally, I'm worried that one day that nosy Parker is going to come to me and start asking questions. Yeah, I should go. <laughs> oh, look at that. Fidel! You and me, we're gonna save the... Oh, look at that. I was about to say we're gonna save the wasteland, but I was just kidding. We're gonna talk to that woman. Uh, like, right now. Maybe not right now. Next episode. Serbia is strong. I see. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.